children of God, you know the God that they serve. Hallelujah! Everybody, you can take a seat. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank God for giving me this opportunity to minister the word to the congregation. I pray that the Holy Spirit takes control. Um, I'd like to thank the shepherds and the elders of the church for giving me the opportunity to preach to the people of God. I pray that the Holy Spirit never be passed from this church. Now, let me get straight to it. Um, when I was given the two lessons um, for today's preaching, I studied them and I wondered how I would come up with the topic of what I'm going to talk about today. And um, I struggled for a long time because I didn't know what to say. I thought I'm going to get out there and I'm going to disgrace myself uh, like, look who has come before me, what am I going to say? But slowly but surely the Spirit of God started to minister unto me as to what I'm going to say to these people. So when I looked back at it, I looked back at the other sermons in which the other youth came to, as the other youth came to say. And looking at their sermons, what God told me was that as Christians we have forgotten the basics. We have forgotten the foundations of Christianity. You see, God has come to remind us that we are not running this race for no reason. We are here for a reason. We are here to achieve the end goal. The end goal is salvation. The end goal is to gain eternal life through Christ. And you see, our brother David came to tell us to stay in our lane. You know, don't go into other people's lane, know your calling and know what you're called for. Our brother Aaron then came to tell us, you know, to play your position. Position yourself to get ready to carry out your work. Our brother Kule then told us to be yourself. You know, start working in the line that God has called you. Today I've come to tell us to know your God. For these are the essential things we need as Christians to gain eternal life. You see, how did I come to this conclusion? You see, looking at both of the lessons, I noticed that at one point, there was two verses in both of the lessons that stuck out to me. Both of them mentioned the second coming of Christ. And, you know, we're going to go into the first lesson, but before we go into it, there's a few, there's a few things I want to pick out. And my Bible, sorry, is not King James Version, so my interpretation might be different to what the you know, King James Version says. But if someone can read, Verse 4. No, in fact, yeah, because I'll read verse 4 for you, please. For the Lord is great yes. and greatly to be praised. Yes. He is to be feared above all gods. Can you read that last part for me, please? He is to be feared above all gods. He is to be feared amongst all gods. There is no other word like God. He is to be feared amongst many. For there are kings and queens of this earth, but there is none like God. Can somebody read verse 5 for me, please? All the gods of the people are idols. Yes. But the Lord made the heavens. The Lord made them. Understand how powerful your God is. He made the heavens, the, the seas, the skies. What we are living in now is not by His grace that we are in this church. We are living under His grace. Understand how powerful He is. Could you, could you read verse 9 for me, please? All worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. You see, my, my Bible here tells me, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him, all of the earth. Do you know what splendor means? It is amazement. It is like in awe. Worship the Lord in amazement. Tremble before him because he is the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. You see, when, let me give you an example. The, the, you know, let's say for example, the queen was to come here. I'm sure many people, even the kids, will be, oh my gosh, there's the queen, like, let me take a picture. You know, I've got to tell my friends in school that I've seen the queen. You know, they'll be amazed. Or if their favorite footballer, favorite celebrity came to the church, they will be looking. Oh, who's there? Oh, I'm even sure of our idols. Um, if your favorite Fuji singer came here. Most people will be like, oh, I've got to get his autograph, I've got to get this and that. 
Why don't we do the same thing for God? It says, worship him in splendor of his holiness. No iota of sin can come before him. Worship him because he is holy and pure. That's what the Bible tells us. So why don't we do the same thing for God? Why do we come and most of us we sit down, we talk during the service, we don't pay attention, we on our phones, or WhatsApp in, Instagram, for our youth, I'm sure many of you know that is. What that Snapchat, doing Snapchat of how good we look for today's service. Why are we focusing on the on the service of God? Can somebody go to verse 13 for me, please? For he is coming to judge the earth. Verse 13, verse 13. It's the same thing, verse 13.
and the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for he was founded on the rock. Thank you. You see, it says, many will come in that time and tell God, I did so many things in your name. I did this, I cast out demons, you know, I helped the poor, I gave to charity. But God will tell them, depart from me, you children of iniquity, I don't know you. And why is that? Because they did not know God themselves. It's my prayer that when we get there, God will not turn us away. Amen. You see, that verse 25 says, it, you will be likened unto those who build your house on a strong foundation. Build your house, build your foundation on the knowledge of Christ. Build your foundation on the knowledge of God, because that is what's going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. You are not going to get into heaven on what you have done on this earth, because it doesn't mean anything to God. You are going to enter the kingdom of heaven because you know who he is. You see, a topic that came not too long ago um, in the Bible class, um, unfortunately I wasn't, you know, here to witness it or I wasn't here to be a part of it. But um, we kind of spoke about it briefly in the youth ministry, you know, um, my brother David brought it up. And he said the topic was lack of growth or lack of spiritual growth in the body of Christ. And it's funny how that topic should link up with what I decided to come and talk about. Because the simple answer is, the lack of growth is because we don't know the God himself. That is it. We don't, we think we know who we are serving, but we don't know God at all. Which is why there's a lack of growth. You see, we don't possess a relationship with Christ. A lot of us would like to think, that we possess a relationship with Christ. But a true relationship with Christ, we don't possess it, which is why we don't grow. We stay at the same level, and people complain of stagnancy, but you don't know because you don't know your God. You see, can someone read 1 Peter 2, verse 2? As newborn babies desire sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Shall I carry on? No, that's, no, that's true. You see, it's all the, uh, my verse says that newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. You see, when I was looking at this verse, I thought to myself, you know, it's there yeah, like we're, we're supposed to desire the milk of the word, you know, to, in order for us to grow. But it's gotten to a stage now where we're no longer babies in Christ. It is enough of the milk. It is time to move on to solids. You see, when you look, when I look at all the other preachers, you know, I watch other preachings, I look at preachings that are delivered to us, when they talk about God, when they talk about the word, what milk are they talking about? They're constantly talking about you, you know, they talk about basic things that we should know, that, you know, you are peculiar people, you are a royal priesthood, you are this, you are that. Christianity is not about you. At the end of the day, these are things you are supposed to know. That is enough of the milk. Let's move on to solids. For the solids is what's going to ensure that we enter the kingdom of God. Knowing that you are a royal priesthood, what benefit is that to God? Okay, you know that you are royalty. Okay. Do you know that no weapon fashion against you shall prosper? Okay, but do you know God? <laughs> like, it's that deep. What, what do you know about your God? You think you know so much. Oh, yes, I know so much about myself. God is not interested about what you know about yourself. What do you know of me? Do you know me in spirit and in truth? That is the question. You see, you see now this leads me on to the second lesson. Can someone read? Philippians. Let us therefore. Philippians 3, verse 15, please. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so, as ye have asked for yeah, an right. example. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you see, my interpretation of verse 15, it says, 
All of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you. You see, he says, those of you who are mature, we're no longer babies. Ignorance is no longer an answer. You can no longer tell God, I didn't know. For how many weeks have you been coming to the church and been preaching on the pulpit? How many times do I come to church on the bus free? I know whoever comes on the bus free. Outside Iceland in Brixton, they will have the microphone stand and be preaching about God. But you just be saying, oh, look at this person, I can never do that. But the word of God is being ministered. Are you listening? Can you hear? They're telling you about God. They're telling you about the second coming. But do you pay attention? But instead, you worry about the worldly things. Things that are going to perish. But you don't know how a strong foundation you've got. This needs to change. Can somebody read um, verse 16, please? us live up to what we have already attained. Last week we celebrated Esau. What is the foundation of Esau? What have we already attained? We have attained eternal life in Christ. Live like you know the God that you serve. Live like you know what you already have access to. Why do a lot of us live as if we don't know the God we're serving? A lot of us live as if we don't know through Christ we have eternal life. But God is reminding us that he's coming. I'm coming and time is far spent. Will you know me enough to enter my kingdom? You see, somebody read verse 17 for me, please. Brethren, right. join in following my example, and not those who walk, as you have also for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Just verse 17, let's read verse 17 again for me, please. Brethren, Join in following my example, and not those who so walk, as you have us for a pattern. Thank you. He says, he says, my Bible says, join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. Watch. Open your eyes and live, live. watch those who live as if they know the God that they're serving. Because you know who because I'm about to tell you by their fruits you shall know them. You know exactly whose foundation is built on the rock of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the word says the stone which the goods have refused has become the headstone of the corner. Are you standing on that stone? Are you building your foundation in God? You see, can somebody read that verse 18 to 19, please? And now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is in their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mm. mind earthly things. Thank you. You see, this, this verse struck out to me and it made me think. There are many who live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. The God, their God is in their stomach and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. You see, now when you look at enemies of Christ, you probably think, you know, we just talk about bad people, we talk about witches and wizards, you know, we talk about... No, we're talking about Christians who like to believe they know their God. But in actual fact, they don't know anything. You know, you, I like to, in fact, I like to call them designer Christians. You know, they like to think you know, because they know all the prayers and they know all the Bible verses from head to toe that they know their God. God loves, you don't know anything. You know why? Because, I'll tell you a story. I was watching a um, story, or the, I was watching a video on YouTube of a guy um, from New York. And he took pride in saying that he's a devil worshiper. He said, 100% yes, I was a devil worshiper. But through Christ he was saved. You see, he said, it started when he was young and somebody, a pastor came to preach in his area and he grew up in a rough background, you know, with that, had a tough time. And the pastor, when he finished preaching, he was praying for people, he was laying their hands on him. And when it came to him, the pastor skipped him and went to another person. And immediately he thought, so God has all this love for everybody else, but he doesn't have love for me. So that prompted him to then become a devil worshiper. Now, he used, to, 
he was proud. If you see the way he was talking, he was upright, you know, he was like, yes, yeah, like, he had trust in his devil, you know. He said at night, the devil would come into his room and he would sit down and possibly they would have a conversation one on one with each other. And so one day, a woman put her husband cheating with another woman. And she came to the man and she said, um, okay, so I just found my husband cheating, you know. Um, I don't really want you to do anything to him, but do me a favor, kill the woman that he cheated with. So the guy was like, oh yeah, no problem, you know, my devil was giving me enough power to do it, you know. I just, he said, so how much are you charge? And I said, 7,000 pounds. Then she was like, oh, that's a little much. Oh my God, I'm rich. Um, he goes, you know, because I know you, for you, I'll give you 5,000 pounds. You know, 5,000 dollars, sorry. He's like, oh, no problem. When she was leaving, he, she then said, oh, just to let you know, she's a Christian. He was like, oh, fantastic, I'll give you free. You know, I, I, do, I love it, I love it. I love killing Christians. So that night, the devil came to his room, sat down, he was crossing his legs. He told the devil, you are going to be killing to you, you know. Like, you got some real, real kids to you now, you know. But let me let you know, so this, you know. He's like, oh, yeah, no problem. Devil told him, get 21 black candles, do all of this, put it in a cauldron, do it, do that. And um, pray on it. So he prayed on it. So he said, the devil told him, 21 days, the woman should be dead. 21 days later, the woman knocked on his door. Yo, you know, you can't take the long tools on the bed, you know. He's <laughs> like, what do you mean she's not dead? He's like, yeah, she's not dead. Um, so the devil, he came back, the devil said, the devil said to him, he said to the devil, so what's taking so long? Why is she not dead? Um, like, you're going to ruin the reputation that I have in this town. Like, I told people I could do these type of things, so why is it not happening? The devil replied to him and said, sorry, there's nothing I can do because the God that she says is allowed to touch her. Yeah. He said, no, 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 who is this God? He goes, what you need to understand is that at the mention of his name, everything is about. I'm not allowed to touch that child. He was angry, he said, no, 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 no. He said, oh, whatever, whatever. He came back another 21 days, he doubled the power of the death of whatever he wanted to do to a woman. Devil came to him again another two months later. He said, I doubled the power of you. I put in all the witchcraft that you gave me. Why is it not working? I feel I told you the last time. God said, I'm not allowed to touch a child. Mm. And he said, so who is this God? Maybe I should start to understand and know who this God is. But then he came to ask him, so they asked him, have you not killed any Christians before? He said, oh yeah, I have, I've killed many Christians. But let me tell you the type of Christians that I kill. Mm. I kill the type of Christians that hold their Bible, that walk around and pretend that they they know God, but they don't know anything. Those are the type of Christians I kill for fun. He said, I've killed thousands of them. But he just only said, I will put spirit of destruction in their homes, spirit of adultery, so their wife will be killing their husband. But the only reason why is because they're not steadfast. They're not firm in their God. They don't know the God that they serve. And this leads me on to verse 20. Because I don't read it. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will you see, again, that's another verse that prompted the topic of today. It says, see, salvation is spoken about, it says, but our citizenship is of heaven. You know, our passport, our visa, our paper is of heaven. That is where we are from. Shouldn't you know the things of heaven? Shouldn't you know God? Because I'm sure when, you know, there's uh, something to get into this country, they give you a test. You're supposed to know Every day, forever, how long ago, they did all this and this and that. So why don't you know anything about God? Don't you know the foundations of, of your of your citizenship? You are a child of God, so why don't you know anything about him? You see, in regardless of salvation, one thing I came to say is that knowing God gives us more benefits than just entering the kingdom of God. You know, it gives us how do I put it? It gives us, it makes our everyday life run smoothly because you know the God that you serve. You see, for example, before I spoke about designer Christians. You see, we have a lot of people who come to the house of God, like I said, they believe, they know too much. But then you have the designer Christians who take it to another level. You have 